What I had noticed was that up here on the top, what had happened is there was a pretty significant crack all along the inside of this. And when you took it out and we could look underneath, it went all the way down through this and into the back. In, to in total, it was probably about, I don't know, two inches. Um, and it was all the way through it. It was starting to separate and it was significant. I was worried about it. Oh, kind of bright out. I've been kind of going about our end of the contract checks that I like to do, which basically entails looking at the vehicles, making sure the oil changes and tires and everything's good to go, all the fluids are topped off, all that kind of stuff. And I also inspect the rig. And one of the things that I always check is the hitch, check it really well. Now I check it, you know, routinely when we hook up and that kind of stuff. Um, but I really get in depth whenever it's been sitting for a while and we're getting ready to pull and especially going a longer distance. One thing I really noticed was that our weight distribution hitch looked a little worse for wear. Not just rust, but there were some things that I noticed that were extremely concerning and I knew it was going to have to be replaced. For the last two years that we've been doing this crazy adventure of traveling around the country in this 37 foot travel trailer that we have affectionately named Windy, while I take these travel nurse contracts around the country, I have used a hitch that we got when we first purchased the rig. It is the Equalizer 4 point hitch and it was the 10,000 pound model. It's been a good hitch. I don't really have that much complaints. Um, you know, I've taken it across the country, lots of miles on it. It has been um, dialed in and leveled uh, two, a couple of different times, I think. The last time was actually at Orangewood RV, which is in Phoenix, ironically where we're heading back to. As far as this weight control goes, I really don't have any complaints about that either. Again, like I said, driven it across the country twice and it has really not been too bad, especially for pulling with an F-150 truck, which I know has gotten a lot of people kind of uh, interested in things. If you haven't seen that video about how we do things with this F-150 and try to make it as safe as possible, check it out up here on the uh, one of the videos I did about that. But this one specifically is going to be about the hitch and why it needed to be replaced and what we got and how I'm going to take care of it. Unfortunately, I don't have very good footage of the hitch, mainly because it was my intention to film on it once we got it to the RV park, have them save it for me and kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison with the old versus the new and show you specifically what it was that uh, was super concerning to me. I'm going to have to show you on the new hitch and just know that that was all in the works, but on the way there, something drastic happened that I had to focus on that took precedence over all of this stuff. Stay tuned, you will hear about that in the upcoming episode. All right, so some of the, uh, you know, wet weather, this Midwest contract, and even on the way down here from Seattle, saw us driving through some pretty significant wet and even snowy weather, and it definitely took a toll on this hitch and you know rust aside is not a hundred percent a reason for replacing something you can grease up a, a, a hitch that's just a little rusty and it can still work for you as long as you're constantly keeping an eye out for things like what i saw and let's just take a look at the new hitch here this is the new one if you uh know what you're looking at you can already tell what i ended up getting this coupler on this side is where the spring arm goes into what i had noticed was that up here on the top what had happened is there was a pretty significant crack all along the inside of this. And when you took it out and we could look underneath, it went all the way down through this and into the back. In, to in total, it was probably about, I don't know, two inches. Um, and it was all the way through it. It was starting to separate and it was significant. I was worried about it. Let me give you a little backstory on the old hitch. When we bought Windy, I was super excited because they said, hey, we'll throw in a hitch for you as part of this whole deal. And I was like, sweet, a new hitch too, I won't have to pay for. Got it all, did all the paperwork, signed everything, they wheel it out, I'm, you know, hooking up the truck to it for the first time and I noticed the hitch is like, not squeaky clean. It's like not brand new and I'm like, is this, is this used? And they're like, yeah, it's used. And I'm like, oh, I thought it was gonna be a new hitch. They were like, yeah, we never said the word new. <laughs> I drove on it for two years, guys. Pretty good distance. And uh, it did okay. It did okay. But I have to wonder, like, 
how long was that crack maybe there that I was missing? You know, how many times did I tow it with a little bit of that crack and just got lucky because it's significant. This is my house, right? This is everything that I have right now. Let me give it to you like this. If you've been following our channel, you know that my family and I love to rock climb. It's like one of our favorite activities that we do. This is a carabiner. This is a full on rock climbing carabiner um, designed to hold a stressor of what's called 24 kilonewtons. Now that's kind of a way of measuring pounds and force together. So if you fall off the rock and this is what's holding you on, it catches you, right? 24 kilonewtons is around the equivalent of 5,394 pounds-ish. It's pretty impressive to think that there are some cars I could lift with this, right? Now, if I were to look for carabiners online to buy, I would never look for used ones. And this is why, even though this thing, and I don't know how well you can see it. You can see the paint is kind of wearing off here where, you know, the ropes have gone through it and that kind of stuff. It's scratched and dinged, but I'm confident that this thing is okay because I'm the only person aside from my family that have climbed on this. I know it has not had any other major falls except for my own on it, which have not even been that big, thankfully. <laughs> Knock on wood, right? But I know that that is safe. Now, that's not to say that if I was getting a used one, even though it had this wear on it, it may have stressors on the inside of this metal where it's starting to separate that I just can't see by visually inspecting it. And I don't have the know-how or the knowledge to know exactly how to inspect something like this, let alone a hitch. And that's my whole point. A hitch is like this to me. I hold my body or my loved ones in the air with this thing on the rock wall, sometimes hundreds of feet in the air. The hitch carries my house behind it. <laughs> it's all my possessions and things that I hold precious and dear. And just because it looks good on the outside, it doesn't always necessarily mean that it's good on the inside. And that's why my advice to you is if you're looking to pick up one and you're looking to you know, buy a rig with a hitch, then I would go new because that way you know there's no question, right? We did drive on it one last time over to the dealership. In terms of the hitch, there were no issues, got lucky. There were some other significant issues, but you'll have to wait to find out what those were. Nevertheless, we drove it over there. If you can't tell, I went again with the equalizer. I went with this hitch for a number of reasons. One, I'm familiar with how it works. Two, the price was right and they had it available, right? Now, I actually upgraded the hitch. Uh, this is the 12,000 pound equalizer. It's what they had on hand. There are lots of great hitches out there. Um, you know, Blue Ox, Andersons, equalizers. There's tons of them. If I had more time, I would have bought this online and then taken it to a dealership. It would have been a little bit cheaper, not significantly, but now on Amazon with free shipping, you guys, I could have had it if I had planned on it beforehand for probably about $60 cheaper delivered to me for free with no issues. If you're looking to buy something like that, check out the links below. I'll have our Amazon affiliate links on there. It helps us out if you are in the market for one to purchase it through us. It doesn't cost you any more money, but we do have to tell you that we're affiliates. Oh yeah, and there's the Hensley Arrow. That's a good one too. I would love to give that one a try, but to be honest, you guys, I'm not making it rain that much. <laughs> so equalizer for the win. Now of note, because it's a kind of a question I would ask, since I went from the 10,000 pound to the 12,000 pound, I was a little concerned at first about how much more weight the actual hitch setup itself was going to be adding to the whole package. So. Um, no one really could give me a solid answer, so I called Equalizer Manufacturing. I called their actual company, and this is what they told me. The 10,000 pound one that we had before weighed in total at 103 pounds. This 12,000 pound setup weighs in at 109 pounds. So for only six pounds more, that's a pretty significant uh, difference in terms of capacity. Anyway, let's get it kind of hooked up and started. So now 
now that I've got this nice hitch that's new and shiny and does have a few scratches and stuff on it, but for the most part, still like rust free, how do I keep it nice? Number one, take it off when you're not hauling. Don't leave it hanging out on the back of your hitch. Um, you know, it's just, the more you leave it out to expose to the elements, the more you're gonna run the risk of increased rust and just wear and tear on it. Take it off, store it in the basement of the rig, store it in your truck, wherever, just get it outside of the weather. Just get it out of the rain so that it lasts longer. Number two, grease the things, you guys. Grease the balls. Anytime that there's metal on metal, it's gonna wear it down. Now, this is important. The balls, you gotta grease it because it's, runs up in here, it's just, I know there are some people out there that say not to do that. In terms of what grease to use, Equalizer says use a multi-purpose grease or bearing grease or axle grease. It doesn't really matter what kind of grease you use. I've heard people use WD-40, uh, dish soap, motor oil, wax paper, you name it, you guys, as long as there's some form of lubricant on there. Now, I have my own opinion. I use like a multi-purpose grease. Here's the deal. You also have to grease these parts of it too. Now, on the equalizers, I know there's some people that are like, no, you shouldn't grease that because that's the friction. So hold on one second, I'll be right back. From the horse's mouth, you guys, that's the manual. <laughs> no one can argue with me on this. All right, let me find it in here. Grease friction surfaces in the hitch head. There's the picture. Let me get to make sure the camera can focus on it. All right, that's the hitch head where the spring arms couple into. There it is. You do grease these parts. Make sure that that stays greased and lubricated. This part here that the spring arms go through, this L bracket, do not grease that. That is the required friction it needs for the sway control. So, look, you're definitely gonna grease up here in the ball. This one doesn't have any much grease left on it right now. Number three, as part of checking this whole setup, make sure you check all the other components that add to this, right? You're not only checking the shank and the bolts, make sure they're tightened and everything is greased. Check the ball for grooves, check the inside coupler, make sure there's nothing significantly worn up there. Check the chains. The chains are getting a little rusty, but that's okay as long as there's no significant cracks in them. Just like I saw with this, chains have looked good. I kept an eye on them also. All right, check the e-brake cable. Now, look at this here, you guys. See that? It's, uh, it's frayed. I will be replacing this. So I'm gonna be replacing the cable. I actually have already purchased it. I just need to get out here and wire it back through everything. That's the e-brake. Another thing you don't want to fail, so... Just make sure you're checking everything all the time. Every time you get in it to drive it somewhere, every time you've been stopped for a while and it's time for another long haul, you always need to at least eyeball it, check the system. I can't iterate the safety factor of all this. That pretty much wraps it up, you guys. I'm gonna wire this cable in and uh, take this hitch back off because even though it's very close to leaving. We are not quite done yet. I've got three work shifts here left in Columbia, and then it's time to roll out and head towards Phoenix. We've got a long road ahead of us down through Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, and finally up to uh, Phoenix for the next contract. I am very excited. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this informative. And uh, yeah, if you're brand new to the channel, leave a comment, let us know, hit the thumbs up button for the video, hit the bell for notifications. And uh, yeah, you guys, we'll see you out there. Thanks for following along with us.